Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and today I have a simple Capture One tutorial for you and this is actually a response to something that uh, people asked for in my Facebook group. So a lot of people have said to me that there's lots of really great Capture One tutorials that focus on some really complex things and how to do, you know, effects and lots of different things like that. But um, somebody wanted to know, could I show like the basic exposure controls and stuff like that? So that is what I am going to do in this video. And I'm going to try and keep it relatively simple and I won't, I'll try my best not to go off on any tangents. I can't promise anything on that, but we'll do our best. Okay, so here I have an image I took a long time ago, back in the days before social distancing. This was in New York City in Central Park and it was, let me just pop over here to the information, let me see, and this was back in 2011, so nine years ago in Central Park and it's not a bad image but there's a couple of little things wrong with it. So um, for a start it's ever so slightly underexposed and also to the colours are a little off. So let's see what we can do and fix this. And I'll do my best to talk through some of the different controls and different things that you can do as well. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is, it's, as I said, it's ever so slightly underexposed. Um, and there's an interesting tool in Capture Ones, which I'm going to pop open. You can actually get it from the this tab here, which is the Capture tab. And this is generally used when you're working tethered. Um, so if you're working with something like a, uh, a medium format pack or something like that, you might use this tool. So I'm going to use it in a way that it's not intended for, but anyway. Um, so I'm actually going to create a floating tool. So if you want to create a, any tool, you can bring it up as a floating tool. So just go window, create floating tool, and we want exposure evaluation. Okay, so I'm going to just pop this up in here and I'll go back to the exposure tab. Um, it doesn't actually matter because this doesn't change. So this just tells you what your uh, raw file, um, or your if it's a JPEG, a JPEG, what it thinks the exposure is. So it thinks it's underexposed by half a stop. Okay, and if you look at it, you can see, if you look at the histogram, we can see that a lot of it's kind of geared towards the lower end here. And it's not actually, there's not that much darkness in the scene. So we can see that it's definitely underexposed. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to close this now because we don't need it, um, is I'm going to bring the exposure up. I think somewhere around here is probably okay. So, I mean, that's obviously too bright and I'm just judging this by eye. So I'm gonna go with 0.4, I think that's relatively okay. Um, and there's, some of the whites are a bit bright, but sometimes it's hard to tell if it's just your monitor. So you can use the exposure warning up here, and this will tell you if anything's clipped. And you can see, so there's some minor clipped highlights here, and to be honest, when there's just highlights and metal like this, sometimes you can just let that go. You don't need to bring that back in. But if you wanted to, um, you could use the new high dynamic range tool, which is in Capture One Twenty, and if you want to bring just the very white elements back in, you just drag down the white slider, like so. I have a blog post on this and on the differences in this. If you're coming over from Lightroom. The white and black sliders in this do not work the same way as they do in Lightroom. They're actually completely different, so don't think that they're the same thing. So basically what the white slider does is it affects kind of the top quarter of the histogram. So if I drag this up and down, if you just keep an eye on that, you see, and it's kind of weighted towards the middle as well. So like there's a fall off, it's not just hard. Um, and then if I was to do the highlights, that's basically the top half of the histogram. So that will, you can see it's affecting more of it. So we don't want to do that. Um, and then the, obviously the opposite goes for the shadows. Okay, so that is that. Now I can turn off my exposure warning because the red's going to be distracting. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is, if you look at the histogram, you'll see that the blacks are set up a little. Okay, so again, if you are coming from Lightroom, the obvious thing to do would might be to drag the black slider down and that will kind of work here. But again, if you look at the histogram as I drag that up and down, you'll see it's only affecting the blacks. Whereas if I was to do that in Lightroom, it would affect the whole image. So you could do that. That was actually would work reasonably well in this case. Um, or the other way to do it is to use the levels tool. 
and just drag that up there. So as you can see, if you again, if you look at the histogram while I drag that, this is actually affecting the whole histogram. So this will behave much more like the blacks in Lightroom. Okay, so I'm going to use that because that's I want. Basically, what you want to do is you want everything to go between the black level and the white level, which is what you're doing with the levels tool. Okay, so straight up that is looking much better um, and you could quite happily leave it at that but I'm not going to <laughs> so let's play around with it a bit more and see what else we can do if we can just kind of umph it up a bit more okay so the first thing I want to do is and when I shot this I shot this on I think it was either cloudy or shade uh, it's a bit red for me so I'm going to just or it's a bit too warm so I'm just going to drop this down a bit and uh, we'll make it cooler so probably should have shot it around there that would probably be more realistic um but i do kind of like the summer tones as well so maybe we'll just bring it up a little bit um i want it a little bit warm but not too much so that's kind of splitting the difference so what i can also do is i can use the color balance tool um and i know i said we would focus on the exposure but i'm just going to do this because it's annoying me so i can if i wanted to i could cool down the shadows slightly and then maybe just warm up the mid-tones ever so slightly and that to me looks a bit more natural than to where we had it so this is still a little flat so we're going to add a bit more contrast to it so contrast the obvious way to add contrast is to drag up the contrast slider and again you don't want much in this but it's kind of a bit kind of too harsh so instead another way to add contrast is to use the curves tool and just use an S, S curve and the advantage of this is when you use an S curve you have much more control over it so I can just drop that down a little and this way I can increase contrast in the upper part of the image and I don't have to crush the black levels too much I mean the other side of this is all of these kind of controls interact with each other. So if I'm bringing the le I'm bringing this down here, I can then use the shadow tools to bring that back up. But then, if when you start mixing different things, you end up over processing your image. So it's always best to try and do as little to your image as possible. So in this case, I'm just not going to bring that down too much, but I want to bring that up. So I can also adjust the overall brightness without adjusting everything else. And in again, if you're coming from Lightroom, Lightroom doesn't have a brightness tool. So brightness, if you look at the histogram, it's like water slashing around. So it's essentially a gamma adjustment. Um, it's a little more complicated than that. The difference between that and exposure is exposure will kind of shift everything whereas brightness tries to keep the whites and blacks anchored if that makes sense okay so I can bring the brightness up a little and again I'm just going to check our exposure warning and we still don't have any kind of overall clipping going on but I think that is definitely better than where we started okay so just to show you where you where we started that's where we started and that's where we are now. So again, it's not a huge adjustment. It's a fairly simple, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of the overall controls here. Um, so I'm still not totally happy with this. I still think it's a little dark, so I'm just going to adjust this a bit more. Okay, so there's a few things that are still kind of bugging me about this. I think the, the in the background, it's still a little set up. So I'm going to, I'm actually, this time I am going to use the black slider. I'm just going to lower that down a bit. And I think that's a bit better. And we can actually use the shadows as well to lower some of that down. The only thing I'm kind of worried about is you're kind of losing these hat and there's a bit of separation going on there. But I think we can live with that. So again, this is where we started with. And this is where we are now. I think that's a lot better than where we started from. Okay, so that's just a basic kind of overall of the exposure controls. And kind of levels and curves and I didn't really touch on clarity because it's, it's actually not really it's more about detail um it does have an effect on exposure but I'm not going to go into that in this image maybe in another episode I will deal with clarity and structure 
So I hope you found this useful and if you do, as always, please like, share, subscribe and comment and don't forget to check out my Patreon page and thanks for watching. See you next time.